Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at how we as humans affect soil erosion and this is everything you need for your A-level and environmental studies. To help you remember all these content on the website there are some free questions and there's a free set of flashcards. A-level environmental science. Topic 2. The physical environment. Lesson 25. Reducing soil erosion. Harvesting crops makes a soil much more likely to erode. A method to try and reduce this impact is the planting of long-term crops. These include any crop species that does not require complete harvesting and replanting, so minimises soil disturbance. Examples include tree crops such as fruits and coffee. When the crop is harvested, the tree will remain intact, meaning it can still intercept rainfall and its roots will continue to hold the soil together. Another farming technique that increases the likelihood of soil erosion is ploughing. Remember, farmers plough their soil to aerate it and encourage aerobic processes such as decomposition and nitrification that increase fertility. Overploughing vulnerable soils can cause the soil structure or the peds to break down, making it easier to erode. An alternative method is using zero tillage cultivation, which is where crops are grown without disturbing or moving the soil at all. For example, to plant the seeds, a farmer would drill them directly into the soil to reduce soil disturbance. This should help protect the soil structure and reduce the chance of erosion. One of the issues is that cultivating crops on steep slopes leads to an increased erosion rate due to higher water velocities. One of the methods used to reduce this is called contour ploughing. This is where the soil is ploughed at a 90 degree angle to the slope, which creates dips and furrows in the soil that help slow the movement of the water, reducing the kinetic energy and its ability to carry soil. As the water velocity will be reduced once it reaches a furrow, it will deposit any soil particles it is carrying. Another technique used on sloped areas is terracing. This is where the sloped land is divided into a series of narrow fields. The soil in each field is held in place by a retaining wall that is built along the contours. By having the areas of flat narrow field, it should help reduce the velocity of water and increase the chance of infiltration. Rows of stones can also be placed on a slope with a gentler gradient. They block the movement of the water running down the slope, reducing velocity and encouraging infiltration. Any soil that the water had eroded would be deposited behind the stones. Tide ridging is used on land that is almost flat and the soil is divided with crisscrossing intersecting ridges. The ridges create pits that retain water after precipitation, allowing it to infiltrate into the soil without running off as it cannot move past the ridges. Crops can be planted on top of the ridges. Another technique that a farmer can use is called multi-cropping, where more than one crop is grown in the field at once. It is important that each crop gets harvested at different times of the year, so that when one is removed, the soil will still have some coverage from the other crops. This works well to protect the soil against high levels of erosion, but it can be difficult for farmers using large machinery to harvest. It works better for human harvesting, as they can distinguish between the two crops and manoeuvre easily between them. Any method that increases the soil organic matter will also help reduce erosion. This is because an increase in organic matter leads to an increased formation of humus, which helps soil particles adhere to one another. Furthermore, the application of a layer of mulch over the top of the soil can also provide protection from rain splash and wind erosion. An example of a mulch material is wood chippings. Finally, managing livestock density is essential in reducing the risk of erosion. It is important that a farmer calculates the maximum stocking density for their area of field and ensures they remain below that number where possible. This will prevent the livestock from trampling plants and compacting the soil. Another alternative could be to fence off particularly vulnerable areas to prevent livestock from accessing it, or the livestock could be removed from the field and placed elsewhere during high-risk times, such as after heavy rainfall. 
calculating the rate of erosion. Sometimes it is clear to see if there is a soil erosion issue on a field, but it is extremely difficult to quantify the rates of erosion and the negative impacts it is having on crop yield. Instead of trying to take complex direct measurements, we use models instead such as the universal soil loss equation. This equation will predict the volume of soil that will be moved by erosion and places soils into categories based on the values obtained. The formula for the equation is as follows, where A equals the rate of soil erosion and the annual soil loss, R is the rainfall erosivity factor, i.e. measure of how easy it will be for the soil to be eroded by rain, K is the soil erodibility factor, so how susceptible soil particles are to erosion, L is the slope length factor, so how long the slope is, S is the slope gradient factor, how steep the slope is. C is the crop management factor, the impact of vegetation if present. And lastly, P is the erosion control factor, so the effect of the type of ploughing used. If you get a question like this in the exam, you will be given the data that you need to place into the equation. Once you have calculated a value, you can then place the soil into one of the following categories. You could also be asked to suggest how the farmer could reduce their risk of erosion. To do this, you would need to look through the data they have provided you and find which factor is the highest and therefore causing the highest risk of erosion and then suggest a management method. For example, if the erosion control factor, the P in the equation is high, then you could suggest zero tillage farming instead, or, if the slope gradient factor, the S in the equation is high, then you could suggest contour ploughing or terracing. They could also ask you what negative impacts the farmer might experience with a high soil erodibility. So you would need to think about a lower crop yield or increased turbidity of the water bodies, for example. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.